Hello everyone, Stealthy Sharon here, and today we're looking at 10 upcoming RPGs under the radar, and one honorable mention, but we'll get to that later. These were titles that I felt maybe weren't being talked about as much or getting that much attention. All of these games are supposed to be released this year, but obviously this can change. If it has a specific release date, then I'll be sure to mention it along with if it has any accompanying demo. Also, check the links in the description for the Steam pages of any of the games you might be interested in. Starting us off is Kataria Fables, an action-adventure RPG with some slice-of-life mechanics developed by Twin Hearts. I'd say it's like a mix between Animal Crossing with all of the animal villagers and Rune Factory with the fighting and dungeons along with a bit of farming. Kataria is a charming game, at least what I could tell from the demo and the trailers. You play as a soldier sent to safeguard Paw Village from monsters that have been spotted recently. In order to do so, well, you have to fight monsters, of course. The surrounding areas are teeming with them, and you could fight them with a variety of different weapons and magic spells in a classless combat system. On the other hand, there's also the farming aspect and learning more about the villagers. I'm not sure that it's something as in-depth as Harvest Moon franchise or Stardew Valley, but it's a nice touch and adds to the charming nature of the game. Also, it supports multiplayer, so you could bring a friend along for the ride. If you like what you saw, then you could pick this one up on September 2nd. And as stated, there's a demo so you can give it a try first and see what it's like for yourself. Next we have Kingdom of Night, an isometric action RPG being developed by Black7 Studios. It's set in the 80s in a small town when a cult accidentally summons a demon and all hell breaks loose. Literally. You play as John and have to fight the satanic creatures to send them back where they came from and save his town. The game will feature multiple classes, subclasses, and skill trees to choose from to create a playstyle that suits you. It also features multiplayer, so you can play together with a friend to fight the forces of hell. I really like the art direction of this game. Several of the creatures looked really creepy. Time will tell if the gameplay will actually hold up, though. No Place for Bravery is a top-down action RPG with brutal combat. It's being developed by Glitch Factory. You play as Thorn, a retired warrior who travels the land in search of his daughter who disappeared long ago. He also has his disabled foster son, Fid, along with him on the journey. The story seems interesting to me, as a parent myself, because the developers seem to place a strong emphasis on, as their Steam page states, the role of parental figures and the consequences of choices in a troubled world. As for the gameplay itself, the combat is very much inspired from a Souls-like game. They even state that it has a Sekiro-esque 2D combat, so I would expect parrying and breaking enemies' guards. The visuals are very well done, from the visceral imagery of the combat to the different areas the players can explore. For those interested in No Place for Bravery, the does is stated that it will be out during Quarter 4. Next is Rogue Lords, a dark fantasy roguelike RPG developed by Lakir Studio and Cyanide Studio. In this game, you play the role of the devil, trying to regain his foothold in the world of mortals. You do this through employing the use of disciples, which are famous characters such as Dracula or the Headless Horseman. Each one of them brings different skills and abilities to the table in and out of combat. The combat uses a turn-based system, but it has a unique twist to the formula. The player, as the devil, has a special resource which is the devil's power. If you choose, you can make a Devil's Bargain, with yourself, to spend some of that power. He can use this to tip battles in his favor, such as manipulating enemy health bars, or taking a buff from an enemy and giving it to one of his disciples. This power can be used outside of combat as well, to try and help you tip the scales in your favor by raising the chances of success. The caveat is, is that if you run out of power, you die, and your run is over. So it's an interesting idea of risk versus reward. If this game sounds interesting to you, then you can get your hands on it on October 1st, which is just in time for the spooky season. Departing from the doom and gloom, Moonglow Bay is a pleasant-looking slice-of-life RPG being developed by Bunnyhug. 
You play the role of an angler who's trying to fulfill your partner's final wish to create a successful fishing business in a fishing village that doesn't actually do any fishing. The visuals use a voxel-based art style, as you can see, and it seems to be really inviting and a peaceful place to hang out. And if you want, you could do it with a friend. But what will you be doing in Moonglow Bay? Well, fishing of course. As you fish, you catalog them in your logbook, and it seems like you could probably use them in recipes for cooking. Along the way, you'll meet and learn about the residents of the town, as well as upgrade your shop, gear, and even your fishing boat. Exploration seems to play a part in the game as well, which would be expected for the kind of game that it is. Alaloth, Champions of the Four Kingdoms, is a high fantasy action RPG being developed by Gamera Interactive. Alaloth is the name of the evil god that triumphed over the rest of the cosmic pantheon and now rules over the world, spreading his evil everywhere. You play as a hero from one of four races and several houses within each to choose from. It's your task to find a way to stop this evil god. The gameplay has a top-down isometric style similar to older games that it's inspired from, like Baldur's Gate. It's an action RPG as well, but that doesn't mean it plays like Diablo or Path of Exile. Instead, each move you make has to be more strategic, and you'll need to dodge and parry too if you want to be successful. I really like this approach to combat because I always find myself just choosing a very powerful area of effect attack in traditional action RPGs, and then never changing up my formula, which can lead to a boring run after a while. Alaloth will also feature multiplayer, which sounds like it could be a lot of fun in a game like this. Next up is Echo Generation, a turn-based RPG set in the summer of 1993 in a small town that is plagued with monsters that may or may not have been caused by some mysterious crash. This game is being developed by Coco Cucumber. You play as a young boy named Dylan who investigates this crash. Along the way, during his adventure, he'll team up with a variety of different friends and pets to battle his way through the monsters and evil robots. I really love stories like Stranger Things or The Goonies, which this definitely seems to be inspired from. The combat itself is a turn-based system that has time button presses for certain attacks. Many comments have said that this game seems to give off Earthbound vibes as well, but I can't really comment on that since I've never played Earthbound. If you like what you saw, then keep an eye out for it, supposedly sometime later this year. War Tales is an open-world medieval RPG being developed by Shiro Games. You control a small band of warriors who travel the lands. I don't think there is much of an overarching story, but more of a player-told story created through your own actions in a highly crafted, low-fantasy setting. In a very simplistic sense, I'd say this game has an open-world feel to something like Mountain Blade mixed with XCOM-style tactical turn-based combat. As you go through the game, you'll encounter various locations and people, and through combat you can level up your companions and further specialize their skill sets. There is a crafting system as well, with several professions for your group to master to create new equipment, food, and upgrading your camp for better performance. I'm not sure if there's going to be factions or competing kingdoms that can change dynamically, like in Mountain Blade, but that seems like it'd be a pretty cool feature in this game. To anyone who wants to try it out in advance, there's a demo out for this one as well. Weird West might be the biggest title on this list as it's being published by Devolver Digital, and it's from the co-creators of Dishonored and Prey. Although I hadn't seen much news on this game before now, so I felt that a lot of other people probably haven't either. Weird West is a dark fantasy set in the Wild West but mixed with horrible monsters of the supernatural. You play as five different characters spread out throughout the entirety of the game. The game world is being touted as an immersive sim. That basically means there are many different systems within the game world that react to things the player does or doesn't do. This can lead to many different things happening in each playthrough, and supposedly it can affect the story and how people might react to you later on in the game. It honestly sounds amazing, and I really find this world super interesting and unique. Weird West is slated to release later this fall, so it should be just around the corner. Finally, there is Black Book, 
a deck builder RPG developed by Morteshka. You play as a young witch trying to release all the seals of her magical black book in order to gain a wish to free her dead beloved soul. This one seems really interesting. Its setting is a Slavic countryside and is steeped in Slavic folklore. I thought that focus to be really refreshing and it's not so overwhelming for those who know nothing about the topic. The game seems to do a decent job to explain specific terms through tooltips and codex pages. The game's use of the codex pages were really interesting too. As a witch of the village, you are the person villagers come to for help with demonic and supernatural issues. So at times, you need to make the proper choice to help them, and the best course of action can be determined by having to read these entries. It's a really clever way to get the player invested in the folklore that the developers probably realize is fairly foreign to the average player. As stated, it is a deck building game, and the fights with demons play out in a card battle. Every turn you're presented with pages from the black book that are different elements of a spell. Each turn, you create a spell made up of three components that each have different effects. You can customize the pages, or cards, which will allow you to tailor what will be pulled from the book during a fight. The game has a demo, but it's a separate Steam page, so if you're interested, you should search for The Black Book Prologue. By the time this video goes out, this game should already be released, as it was slated for an August 11th release date. As I said at the start, I have just one more as an honorable mention, which is Eastward, being developed by Pixpill. According to the Steam page and even the game's official website, it's classified as an RPG. In everything I've seen about the game though, I thought that this was more in line with an adventure game than anything else. Regardless, I thought this game looked amazing, and I wanted to add it to the list to give it what little extra exposure I can manage for it. Anyway, in Eastward you control John and Sam and make your way through the game's vibrant world. Each character has their own skill set, whether it's John's array of tools or Sam's telekinetic powers. Together, the player will have to use them to solve puzzles and fight enemies. I thought this game just oozed personality from the first trailer I saw years ago. I wasn't sure if this game would ever see the light of day because I hadn't heard anything about it. But they released a new trailer for it recently, and apparently have it slated for a September 16th release. So now we reach the end of the list. Did you find anything interesting? Outside of Eastward, my top picks would be Weird West and Rogue Lords. Let me know what games you might be excited for, or are there any that I missed that you just can't wait to play? Thanks for watching! If you happen to like what you saw and got something out of this, then please leave a like, comment, subscribe, or whatever it is you feel like doing. Thanks again, and have a nice day.